I'm assuming that's what the thumbnail looks like. Something like that? No? Oh. In that case, I just look like a knob. I've shown you guys this before. It's a presence sensor from Lincoln Link, and it's 16 quid. It doesn't get any cheaper than that for something that is this good. Oh, um, well, I bought one a rubber. I it. I heard it. Yes, I, I heard that a lot in the comments section of the last vid. Hang on a sec. <sighs> How long did you people actually try to use this thing for? I've set up in this room, right? I just have one automation that says, when you come in the room, turn the lights on. Stay on as long as I'm in this room, and when I leave the room, turn the lights off. Works like magic. house now I'm just waiting for the studio to turn itself off which it should be doing any second because it's been about two minutes since I left the studio but oh, there you go there we go all the lights are off in the ready room cool let's walk back in look at that look at that what did I tell you what did I tell you look it works what, did you, what were you people doing and it's not a traditional motion sensor, but a genuine radar-based sensor. And it has had the most important update imaginable. More to come on that shortly. It isn't perfect. And we'll talk about how it's not perfect at the end of the video, because it wouldn't be a fair review if I didn't. But 16 quid? Can I just reiterate that? And it works with Amazon Alexa, it works with Google Home, but most importantly, and here is the kicker, it now works directly with Home Assistant using MQTT. What do you mean you don't know what that means? If you know what that means, that's really exciting. If you don't know what that means, it works with Amazon Alexa. You'll, that, that'll please you, right? I mean, you're sick of using your voice, right? That's not the only reason to be excited though if you're a Home Assistant user. This little infrared blaster also now works with MQTT and I'm gonna show you some awesome stuff coming up with this. Thanks to Lincoln Link for sponsoring today's video so that I could tell you guys all about Lincoln Link's new MQTT update for Home Assistant. And if you haven't seen the infrared blasters before, this thing basically just allows you to use your face hole via either Amazon Alexa or Google Home or whatever it is you want to use, in my case Home Assistant, to change channels on your TV and turn your TV on and off, even though your TV is dumb. If you want to turn your TV on and off, or turn your lights on and off, the links are in the description. 16 quid. It's, it's the end of the video for you people. If, however, you're a Home Assistant fanboy, well then stick around. We're going to really bury your sex life by setting up MQTT in Home Assistant. Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Paul from the Pest, would you like to walk the boys and girls through it? No, mate, you slept with my wife. Yeah, I, listen, I know, you, listen, you slept with mine first. I think we can help each other out, okay? In a week's time, you complain about the baby waking you up once in the night, when Nisha was awake the whole night, and she flicks you in the right testicle. Don't, don't do that. My balls don't hurt. So obviously the first thing I've done is got this thing connected to the internet by using the Lincoln Link app just to add this thing to my network. Once it's added to my network, I can go about the process of setting up MQTT in Home Assistant to then react to this thing by putting MQTT settings into the Lincoln Link app for this thing. Two things marry up. Bob's your uncle. A few minutes later. So now, I haven't actually tested if this works myself yet, and we go into settings, and then devices and services, and then scroll down till we find our MQTT integration. I got a whole bunch of devices in here from previous stuff, and one of them, hopefully, is... Oh, two of them for some reason. I have no idea what it is. Let's set the first one. Ah, uh, oh no! Look at that! 
If you were to try and do this with a Broadlink R M4 Pro, there would be so much work involved. It's got all of the buttons from the remote. Let's try pressing one. <gasps> the TV went off! Look, 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 look! Oh, oh my god, the TV's gone off! I know I shouldn't be this excited, but nothing in my life ever works first time. That's amazing! Oh, I've got control over everything on that telly now in Home Assistant, and it took no effort whatsoever. This does beg the question, now that I've got this connected to Home Assistant, what happens if we add my aircon remote to this infrared blaster? Is it gonna appear in Home Assistant? I suspect it probably is. Uh, red room infrared blaster, add appliance, air conditioner, add to Home Assistant, search for Fujitsu. No model available, can't find my model? Option one most popular. Test. On. <gasps> what? Off. Hey, you know what? That works already. What have we got here? HVAC. Oh. Ah. Uh. <gasps> no. Dude. Control of the aircon. That's insane. I can do everything with the aircon. I don't believe it. I can change the modes, I can change the temperature, I can change the fan speed, and all I did was what you just saw. That's incredibly good. I've also set up MQTT for the presence sensor in the exact same way. The instructions are absolutely identical. If you wanted to control your room with a presence sensor using Home Assistant, 16 quid, and it's that easy to do. That's not the only use for it though. There are other uses, such as ensuring elderly relatives have moved in the last 12 hours. Or more importantly, is your wife in the bath stoned off her tits? I kind of felt this marketing material would work better as a video, so I asked AI to animate it. Check out Little Miss Lady Two Baths dumping lumps of cocaine into her second bath. What? Setting up the Broadlink RM4 Pro in Home Assistant to do this was a nightmare. Access main program. Access main security. Access main program grid. Please! God damn it! Hate this hacker crap! If up until this point you've been thinking I'd really like to get an infrared blaster for Home Assistant, this is it. MQTT is way, way easier to set up than a Broadlink or M4 Pro. To be able to do this with Link and Link now using MQTT and it just automatically find all the different commands for your TV remote, that is mind-blowingly cool. Simultaneously, the MQTT thing for the whole motion detection, that is out of this world efficient. It is so fast in the way that it responds, and it really is something that I would consider using for this room in place of the far more expensive Akara FP2 presence sensor that I have been using up until this point. There is one reason I can't do it, which leads us on to what's wrong with it. It's not really a presence sensor. It's more of a motion sensor that kind of has the technology of a presence sensor, but isn't utilizing it to its full capacity. So this thing uses millimeter wave technology. So it's using radar. It's just that it is telling your smart home system, turn on every time it sees motion. So if you, if you scratch your ass, turn on. If you turn your head, turn on. A true presence sensor doesn't do this. It just says somebody is in the room, and then it waits until they're out of the room, and then it says, somebody has left the room. That's all your automation system knows about. If you're using Amazon Alexa, you have a routine that says, if there's someone in the room, turn the lights on. When that person leaves the room, turn the lights off. This thing is going, hey, Amazon Alexa, turn on. Oh, he scratched his ass. Hey, Amazon Alexa, turn on. This isn't a problem for the vast majority of people. Let me explain. If you have this set up in your living room, and you have an Alexa routine that says, when I walk into the room, turn the lights on, that's fine. You sit on the sofa, the lights turn on. You scratch your ass, it sends the signal to turn the lights on. The lights are already on, but who cares? Doesn't matter. The lights are already on, you don't know about it. 
The problem comes when you decide to add to that routine, turn the TV on. If you add to that routine, turn the TV on using the Lincoln Link infrared blaster, what happens is you sit down and the TV turns on because motion was detected. You scratch your ass, motion's detected, turns the TV off again. Because your TV is dumb and it uses the same command for on and off, and it's worth keeping this in mind. If you're using Home Assistant, this won't matter because you'll be able to set up a Home Assistant routine that turns on a toggle and that toggle doesn't turn on and on and on and on, it just turns on once, sends the signal. And then when you leave the room, you have that toggle turn off again. It's really easy to set up, so it's not a problem in Home Assistant. It's only a problem if you're planning on using Amazon Alexa routines and you intend to turn the TV on and off. Perfect for lighting. Paul from the future here. Um, I'm editing this video and I've just thought he forgot to say a bunch of stuff. I'm just gonna uh, place my mobile phone in his crotch and uh, occasionally look at some notes because I'm gonna forget them too. Uh, so first of all, there's an ultra version. Sorry, Paul from the past, I don't want to keep looking at your balls. Um, there is an ultra version of this thing coming, which means that it will be even more accurate, but hopefully, I'm really hoping, it will actually act as a presence sensor rather than a motion sensor like this one does. Uh, secondly, Link and Link, this is a huge commitment to Home Assistant. If you haven't realized this already, this is a full-blown smart home company that has chosen to start integrating their stuff into Home Assistant where everybody else is trying to lock their stuff down. This is exciting. This is not only an exciting time to be a tinkerer of things, it's exciting to think that the smart home industry is moving in the tinkerer's direction. Uh, thirdly, they have a hygrometer. I forgot to mention this. This is uh, a sensor that does humidity and temperature, and this too has MQTT support, and there are more devices coming with MQTT soon. Finally, a 15% discount code in the description. I forgot to tell you that. If you're interested in buying any of these things, they're discounted below. I'll, uh, I'll let him carry on. Just, I just want to check in with Lady Two Baths. <laughs> There is one other thing, I guess, that I think people probably fell foul of last time, and that's why there were a lot of complaints that it doesn't work. It clearly does work. It's working right this second. The lights are on because I'm in this room, because that thing is telling Home Assistant to keep the lights on because I'm in this room. A lot of people, I think, didn't spend the time to get this thing in the correct position in the room. I have spent all day testing this thing. I have had it on in this room and it has done nothing wrong the whole day. And that's because I spent the time to get it positioned correctly in the room so that it could see the whole room, that it was high enough, that it wasn't too high, it wasn't too low. And you need to make sure, and this is key, that you spend a bit of time in the settings making sure that you've picked either low sensitivity, medium sensitivity, or high sensitivity, depending on what you are experiencing. The other thing I've done is set it to one second delay time before it tells Home Assistant Yep, I've seen motion. Yep, I've seen motion. I've then set Home Assistant to say, don't turn the room off unless you've got two minutes of no presence. That's all you have to do. It really is that simple. And you can do exactly the same thing in an Amazon Alexa routine. You just tell Alexa, don't turn the room off unless there has been two minutes of inactivity. You do that part right, and you've got a 16 quid presence sensor. You could stick these things all around your house, have them connect to Home Assistant via MQTT, which is super awesome, and have absolute control over your whole home with complete accuracy. You know, the Akara FP2 presence sensor is something like 50 pounds more than this. Why is it so heavy? No, Amer- no. It's in Great British Pounds, America. As usual, there are links in the description as to where you can pick either of those devices up, or in fact, the hygrometer, which I haven't actually even had a chance to talk about. That too has MQTT from now on. In the meantime, I'd like to thank my patrons, as I do every week, for making this video a possibility. Without them, I'd still be working in a call center. If you want to be like those guys, or in fact like Paul Pedrick, who is my patron that I am thanking personally this week, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I'll genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks, my exes, my threads, my Instagrams, and my TikToks. Come and hang out there, I can be best friends. See you next time. I don't work, it's rubbish. I... <laughs> He's back. How long did you... I'm going to do that again.